All right, here we go again. So this run is a save corruption fiesta. We gotta save corrupt many, many times. Save corrupting is basically resetting the console in a specific frame in the saving process to get the results you want. So first one we use is uh, to get to the debug room, which is the developer debug room that the developers used to test the game when they were making it, which they left in just in inaccessible through normal means, but it's accessible through save corruption means. So to set up the runner first, I had to get to zero data on the memory card, because if you don't have zero data, it's not just as simple as deleting, a, deleting all your saves. There's certain games that don't have, or a lot of games that don't have zero data for this game. So I had to delete certain games, saves. In my case, it's Mega Man X4. So I put Mega Man X4 in every, or the first three slots, and then delete that save, those saves. And that makes it so it's zero data, so we can get the debug room with this so stuff this we need. Otherwise, a lot of different things can happen if you do save corruption. So we're going to be skipping most of the story with the debug room. Is this really necessary? It is his majesty, Emperor Dole's command, to take that girl into custody. Who is she? That is not your concern. But we're going to be watching the game normally up until the first save point, which is actually pretty early into the run, eight minutes into the run, we can get to the save point. And then we can start our shenanigans with save corrupting. See, so yeah, I'm gonna be skipping like 80% of the story, so you see the very beginning and the end, basically. And a couple things in the middle where we jump around to pick up all the stuff we need. So yeah, save corrupting, we can do a lot of different things. We can get to the debug room, we can duplicate bosses, and get the, uh, move the experience from after the boss to before the boss. We can duplicate equipment. We can duplicate items. And the process is slightly different for each. Although at the same time we dupe bosses, we actually dupe equipment. So that's what we're going to be doing when we get the experience we need to be able to beat the game. Okay, so text in this game, you want to hold X. It's character by character and loads faster if you hold an X. Until the red arrow appears and you can hit the button to move along. What do you mean? I have the world record. The 323, 320, uh, the 232 is the world record for legit, and no one's gonna beat my legit time. Lasagna may beat my turbo time eventually, but he can't mash. Not many people can mash, and also speed run this game <laughs> for some reason. I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't. Wouldn't say maybe ne never. But I'll probably beat it before anyone else. Since my son best is 217 right now. Hey hero, what's up, dude? How's it going? So there's also a task a new task run this game about a month ago. Task of this route. But the difference is the task has a lot of uh, capabilities that a human doesn't have, like uh, frame perfect RNG manipulation of all the bosses. So the task is actually able to beat all the final bosses that we need to beat with minimum level because it can ma manipulate the RNG exact, have exact RNG it needs, which is like a one in one in 2,000 runs they get that kind of RNG. So since we're not a task, we actually have to do some, do some stuff rather than just go straight to the end of the game or do more stuff. The task only needs to pick up pick up a couple items. We had to pick up a bunch, a few more items, and we need to get some extra experience.
Otherwise, we won't be able to beat the game. Unless, you know, we get the super RNG luck. Or have RNG in it. We don't have RNG in it because it requires frame-perfect menus, basically. To manipulate the RNG in this game. So we're going to be doing a couple marathon safe strats this time. So I don't have to reset again. But now that I do it, I probably won't mess it up and won't need them, but we'll do it anyway. It's fine. The marathon safe strats only lose a couple seconds. So like I said, we just play normally until the save point. Then we can save corrupt to the debug room with our zero data memory card that we just made before our just did before the say it and start the run so this battle is basically a tutorial battle Both enemies die to one addition from Dart, his starting addition. Additions are basically the normal attacks uh, with a rhythm game, basically. You just gotta hit X or circle at the right time. We're only gonna see additions here on this fight and the final fight. Everything else will be using items F4, which is a mashing game. You just gotta mash. Mash up to high zingo. Of course, pro masher here can mash to the highest percentage. The higher you mash, the more damage that item does. All right, normally I'd only make two saves here. The second being the debug room, but Marathon save strats, every additional save is basically another chance. So I'll make two. Another chance at uh, fixing our levels. So we need saves here with our level one to fix our levels after we go to the debug room. Once we go to the debug room, all our memory slots are filled with zeros instead of one, uh, what they should be. So first save corrupt to get the debug room is actually pretty easy. So we I just use the timer for the split segment. 4.68 seconds this is where you want to shoot for. And if you do that on a memory slot with zero data, I use slot two. I use slot two for my debug. So I know that slot is a uh, zero data. And then you save. So I hit save and the split button at the same time. And then reset the console at 4.68 seconds. Now when I load that save, it should be at the debug room. So developer debug room is what shouldn't normally be accessible. But since we're save corrupting, we can ac access it. Debug room in this game only has just four four maps and has different locations in each of those maps for each of the discs. Nothing fancy like if you've ever seen Final Fantasy VII debug room percent. Final Fantasy VII's debug room is better because you can actually max your character stats and abilities, materia very very fast in a single battle or two battles. This debug room doesn't have anything like that, so we just gotta. <coughs> do things in game instead of the debug room to do all that so basically just skipped eight hours we can't just go straight to Xenobatos we need to go to Mayfield which is this city right after 
Xenobatos. We actually need to go to Xenobatos, though. Because if we go straight to the Xenobatos, the game's actually going to soft lock. So there's, there's, there's a lot of things you could do with the debug room that soft locks the game. So we don't want to do any of those things. So the route's carefully constructed not to soft lock the game with the debug room strats. And all the cutscenes are still there. They're, none of them none of them get deleted until you watch them. Or most of them don't get deleted until you watch them. Some are connected to another cutscene. If you watch that cutscene, it'll delete the other ones. But it's a pretty rare occurrence. So the story doesn't make much sense if we skipped eight hours of the game. So now that we're... To this point, we just want to go around and pick up a bunch of items we need to be able to beat the game. And then dupe some bosses to be able to get the experience we need to be able to beat the game. And then we'll use another glitch, save anywhere glitch, to be able to go to the furthest point we can in the debug room. And then beat the game from there. So first thing we want to do here is actually sell all the broadswords, the zero data item. So when you go to the debug room, all your slots are filled with zero data. That's character slots, item slots, gold slot, level slots, everything is filled with zero. So all our characters level zero, and we all our item slots are filled with level zero, or the zero data item, which is broadsword, sells for 10 gold. So we need to do the broadsword mash. Which is harder than any item match. So let me do that. So normally, if I was doing a, just a regular item in battle, I'd already be done by now. Now I'm not even halfway done. My hand's slipping. That's the hardest part of the run, in terms of execution. He did the broadsword match. He did the match. Anyway, now we got to fix our levels with another save corruption. Whoops. Which is why I made those two saves so I get two chances at it. Get my metronome open. So every save corruption after the debug room is actually a little more tight in terms of frame windows. So I'll use a metronome for all those to be able to time it more precisely than just looking at the timer. So basically what I did is, uh, if you noticed, I had level zero, three level zero darts. But now that I did this save corruption, they should all be level 1 darts. Because I made the save before I went to the debug room. Basically, saving over that to get the location we're in, but we want the levels we had on the other save. We want to check that, make sure we got it. We got it. Alright, now we got the levels, so we'll go around back over here and shop. Buy some items we need to be able to... We'll buy uh, charm potions to be able to move around without encounters, which we'll die if we get encountered, basically. And two pieces of armor for later. So 
So charm potions basically reduce your threat of a battle down back down to zero. So battles in this game are pretty linear. If you're on a screen that gets battles, then Hey Digiland, thanks for 17 months, you mega legend, appreciate that. Anyway, the blue arrow on top of Dart's head goes from blue, yellow to red. For the flash cart. Sorry I was late to dono dude. Enjoy. Hey Big Solly, thanks for ten dollars you mega legend, appreciate that. So we're gonna watch cutscenes out of order as well. So this is actually the last one you usually usually see in this area. But instead we're gonna watch it first. And normally Dart's on the screen for this cutscene. But we just warped here, so he's not on the screen yet. So they're actually all gonna walk to Dart. Which is gonna be we way up there. Kind of a fun fun little thing there. Anyway, like I said, encounters work. Uh, once you get down to 100, once you get up to 100%, basically the blue is uh, 0 to uh, 50, uh, 0 to 49%, and yellows are 50, 50 to 74%, and then red is 75 to 100. So, want to watch the arrow, make sure near the end of the red we don't get an encounter, but we also we uh, use a charm potion instead. I also want to pick up some good items here. Moon Serenade to sell for later. Sell later for gold. And the Magical Hat's this tied with the strongest helmet in terms of magical attack. So helmets in this game give magical attack. And items in this game are uh, dependent on magical attack. So we're basically going to use the items to kill everything. So we want a high magical attack in our characters. The heck? That doesn't happen too often. So also if you notice we have three darts. Another symptom of the debug room. But when we go to a place, we go to a story place that fixes the party. It fixes the party, of course. That's why we're actually here. One for those, those two items, and then we have another item coming up. It's actually the most important item in the whole run: psychedelic bomb, which is the strongest magical attack item, and it's repeatable. That means that every battle it comes back after the battle, so we can use it in every battle. For free, basically. And it's like four times stronger than a normal attack item. And it's elementalless or non elemental. Dang it! What are you doing that? Gotta be careful not to sell that item. Or use that item. That's a hundred gold right there we wasted. It's fine, doesn't matter too much. As long as we get our items back and then save Crusher is doing. So anyway, this is a psychedelic bomb test here. Not only does it fix our party, it also gives us the strongest attack item. It's a pretty good thing to do here. And also another thing when we did that save correction before to fix our levels, it puts everyone at minimum level. Of course, Dart's minimum level is one. He's not important though. But there's, everyone else has higher minimum levels. Namely Miranda, our strongest character with magical attack. She has the highest level, minimum level. If we don't have Shauna, it's kind of complicated, but uh, Miranda actually replaces Shauna in the game normally. There's the main character, lead, main lead female character for most of the game. 
So if you never got Shauna, Miranda's minimum level is actually way higher. Which we never got Shauna, so... Instead of being Shauna's minimum level 4, she's Miranda's minimum level 23. Which is pretty gigantic. Little input break here. Same with Albert and Lavitz. We never got... We never got Lavitz, so Albert's minimum level is... 15... 14, 13, 15, somewhere around there, 15. But it doesn't matter because we're going to be using uh, Miranda and Kongo. Kongo is actually strong enough to be able to handle the one fight he has to do on the moon. So the moon, the final dungeon, has a bunch of force battles that everyone has to solo except Dart. Dart has his own fight with Rose, so Rose can handle her fight and Dart's with Dart in it. So experience in this game actually gets split among surviving characters. So the moon like this place, this is a challenge for every character. I basically have to answer questions correctly. Good old text bosses. If I answer the wrong, if I answer the questions wrong, the run's over. I gotta restart. But luckily, I've done this enough where I memorized everything. Only reason I'd mess up is because I wasn't paying attention. Hey, Sophology. Welcome, Darkside. My mashing is not very good right now for text. Anyway, experience in this game works because so it's split among the surviving characters. So that means if all three characters survive, everyone gets 33% experience of the experience. And everyone in the back row gets half of that. So that'll be 16.7 or whatever percent of the experience of a battle. But, if one character survives, they get 100% of the experience of the battle. And everyone in the back row gets 50% of the experience. So that's a good way to min-max the experience. And to put it on characters that need the experience. So we're going to be using Miranda and Kongle. Dart and Kongle both died. For the boss tube we're going to be doing later. I think this is a really long cutscene to be watching, but it's totally worth it for the <clears throat> two reasons I said. Fixing the party and getting the most powerful attack at him. One more I gotta pay attention for. Oops. This one's a bit weird because this cutscene is actually contained in the memory file for some reason. So normally we wouldn't have to switch disc here, but since we're using debug. We're using debug and we didn't watch this cutscene in disc 2. We have to uh, switch to disc 2 now for some reason. Kind of weird. I mean, not for some reason, cause, because apparently the, this cutscene right here is uh, saved in the memory file. So 
So since it was never saved in the memory file, I had to put in this too. Basically, we're just learning a little more about each character, which we never weren't introduced to in the first place, so we have no idea who the heck they are. Now, if you want to, if you want to know the story of the game, you gotta play it normally, not with uh, skipping 80% of the game. Uh, this is the last non-default answer here. Alright, there's still two more, but those are easy. Just match for the rest of it. Of course, Rose has enough courage that she doesn't even need to answer any questions. Should he has all the answers. So yeah, after we're done here, we just exit back the way we came. <clears throat> Another soft lock with the debug room is if you actually kill this boss in this area and you try to leave, the game soft locks. Because one of the cutscenes mess up or something for some reason. Yeah, for some reason the game does not want you to get here from the debug room and then kill the boss. Which is fine, we don't need to kill the boss anyway. All right, now we need to go a little bit further to pick up the pick up the item. Actually, then we can leave. So we'll change our party now. So we have to open the menu again. Another short cutscene to get the item. Then we'll leave back the same way we came. Visit a couple more places for some items. So the task actually just picks up a couple items before this and then comes here and then save corrupts to the moon from here. There's a save point in the couple in the next screen. But since we're not the task, we don't have frame perfect uh, RNG manip. We need to get some experience before we do that. That was close. Kinda won't be that bad now, but still lose time. Since we have Miranda and, and Psych Bomb, we could just use Psych Bomb with Miranda on any counter and kill it. Still slower than not getting a counter though.
And then Counter is also also broken this game with a down and oops, what am I doing? Wrong button. With down and left movement. The encounter rate goes up by like three times as much. This is such a poorly coded game. <laughs> No cap. And since I sold that freaking, or since I used that uh, moon serenade, we'll just pick up this chest. It's only worth 10 gold, but might actually need it. We'll see a lot of different things can happen when you save corrupt. Depending on the timing, which is pretty hard to be exact unless you guys have a task. So I can either. So there's certain order the save saves over. So basically what save corruption does is uh, get the status of one save with the stats of another save. Alright, we're going here for some stuff. Gotta watch a few cutscenes here. Some pretty powerful items. My, uh, I guess I'm just not focused. Focus on them. Like I guess you gotta hold X and then mash X. Usually I just max, hold and mash at the same time and just release at the proper time. Since I use the double thumb mashing technique, I'm holding with my right thumb and mashing with my left thumb the whole time. It's very easy to not pay attention though and lose some frames. Alright, another couple items we need to buy here. To set up the equipment duping, we don't want to equip them, so I have to be careful not to equip them in the menu. It's easier just to overmash and equip them. Because the way the save corruption works when we're duping the boss, we can also dupe the unequipped equipment. Like that. So we wanted the magical ring, magical greaves. Magical ring is pretty important. Increases magical attack by 30. And magical greaves make uh, physical and magical evasion up by five and plus ten speed. Speed's a pretty important item uh, stat. Determines turn order. 
and the amount of turns you get compared to the uh, boss's speed or the monster's speed. I'm also going to pick up another two important items. Bandit shoes, which is for male characters, increases their speed by 20. So we're going to be duping those and putting them on all our male characters. And also a power down, which is pretty important as well. It's another repeatable item, so every single battle we can use it. And it, <clears throat> for three of the enemy's turns, it reduces, it uh, times their damage taken by 1.5 and their damage done by 50%. Uh, something like that. Something like that. Anyway, they take more damage, they do less damage for three turns. Which is pretty important. And he uses every single fight. fight. We gotta watch his cutscenes because we got the banner shoes. Since we could dupe him on all our male characters, they're worth it. Whack. So in this area, the battles are on screen. You can't get into a battle by running around unless you run into a battle. So be careful to avoid all the battles here. This area, of course, is free. No battles there. So all those insects and shoot too far to the right. Wasn't paying attention. I went too far right and being in that screen. This next screen is actually the hardest screen coming up after this one. Gotta make sure not to go too early, not to get stuck on the rock. Might look easy, but it's not that hard, not that easy if you don't know exactly what movement to do. Alright. I'll go here, do a little bit of shopping. Back on this too. Get the rest of the charm potions we're gonna use for the rest of the run and some burnouts, which are an attack item we're gonna be using. Because the boss we're gonna be duping is an ice ice boss, so fire does more damage. And like the name implies burnout, it's actually fire based attack item. Of course, Psych Bomb still does way more, but we can only use that once. Now I have to kill the boss. And there's actually a mid-tier armor here that we're going to be using. For our female characters.
which is actually just what the normal classic run does. Is use these armors for the end game. Almost equipped it. Do not want to equip it. Since we didn't get the, we accidentally used the moon serenade. We have a hundred or ten less. Shouldn't matter. Hopefully. Because when you we're going to duping these bosses, when we also be hopefully getting the proper frame to get our items back as well. So the way do uh, boss duping works is we're going to be making a save before the boss. Making a save before the boss with all our equipment unequipped. And then after we make that save, we're going to equip all our equipment. And then fight the boss. And then make new saves. And then when we really reload the save before the boss and use save corruption over the save after the boss... We'll be getting the experience from after the boss. And the items equipped on the characters. Also, we ha also have the items not equipped. With the boss not killed. So we can kill this boss over and over and over again for experience. And at the same time, we could dupe the equipment we just picked up and equip it on all our characters. So we don't need to mess with their equipment for their, uh, we call them moon fights. The final dungeon is the moon. And has, uh, one-on-one -on -one fights for all the characters. I want to pick up this hammer. Worst comes to worst, we can sell later. Or, uh... Use it as well. For Maru's... Maru's, uh, moon fight. That's our uh, weapon. Alright, one more item to pick up a uh, pretty strong helmet we need for the final boss. Because it uh, makes the character immune to confusion, which the final boss uses. Alright, so we'll make a save before the boss. Equip all our equipment and go fight the boss. Additions. Twin armor, shoes, hat, armor, everything. Let's go. All right, so finally get a battle here. Of course, Miranda wants to use items. Easy max mash. One, two, eight, nine. Power down for anyone else. Yeah, we use Hex Hammer on Hatchel for the final boss. So this boss's uh, attacks are pretty scripted. He uses magic against magic attacks and a physical attack against physical attacks. 
What's up, Alex? How's it going, dude? Speed three, what? Four, one, five. I missed an input there. Huh. Hatch last attack, or uh, Kong last attack, because the uh, defending makes him take half damage. Alright, that's good, that's good. So far, so good. Oops. Finger slipped. 19, 17. 180. Please kill Congo. That's not enough. Nice. I do have a good one, dude. Hand slipped a few times there. Mashing is a little bit subpar right now. Alright, so we're gonna be killing this boss three more times for the experience we need in a human run. So we want to make different saves. So number th uh, three slots to save at before. We'll make two just so we have two chances at it. Then we'll reload the save before Windigo. And then save corrupt over the save after Windigo. Bada boom, bada bing. We'll have the the quest not done, and we'll have the experience and the we'll have the quest not done and the equipment unequipped from before Windigo on the first save. And then we'll have the experience and levels and equipment on our characters from the save after Windigo. So again, precise save corruption here. I want to use the metronome. So one thing that can go wrong is I do it late and it already starts Saving over my character levels with the first save from the first save. So if Dart doesn't have one life left, that means he got saved over. <clears throat> and the characters are saved over in blocks, so it goes Dart's his own block, and then Rose and Hashel are their own block. So hopefully if he gets saved over, he doesn't matter. But if we're a little bit more late than that, and Rose and Hatchel are saved, we have to do it again. So first, I want to look at levels. Good, good, good. Let's go. So 
So if Dart doesn't have one HP, that means he got saved over. And if Dart gets saved over, I want to make sure that Rose and Hatchel weren't saved over. But he wasn't, so they weren't going to be. If they, if he was out, I would go into the stats menu and check Rose and Hatchel real quick. So this one's a little bit different. I want to do the equipment menu afterwards because I want to equip the weapon he drops to Hatchel. Nice, we got our items back as well. That's good. We needed that to happen at least once to be able to burn out. A bunch of different things can happen in the save corruption. In terms of equipment as well. Depending on the frame that we get. Let me save corrupt. This is four. Four one four eight. That's a max. Dark and defend. Fatal Blizzard. Fatal Blizzard. Okay, well one one down, one to go. Someone dies, that's when we want to go die first there. Stark can just defend, which is a faster animation. Ugh, missed an input. 21 4. Hand keeps slipping. Hand keeps slipping. Slip that time, 23, 3, 1. Kill Dart, please. 75% chance kill Dart. Please kill Dart. Nice. Alright, he's still powered down. Which means uh, 158 kills. 148 even kills. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Easy goal split. Free goal split even. Alright, so we do the same thing. This one's a bit different though. We'll uh, equip, save corrupt, equip again. <clears throat> Magical Grease, Phoenix Plume, Brass Knuckles. Go ahead and heal her too. Death Graves, Pink's Helmet, Brass Knuckles, everything, Sparkle Dress. Remake the two saves afterwards. And then, reload the save before. So this is basically save corruption present. We do a bunch of save corruption and do all those things we need to do. Almost loaded the wrong save, that would have lost a minute. Gotta be very careful to load the right save. Alright, another save corruption here. What up, Lictar? How's it going, dude? So, like I said, normally the a task wouldn't have to do this, all this stuff here because a task can perfectly manipulate RNG for all the battles on the moon to be able to handle them with minimum level. But since I'm a human and I can't perfectly RNG manip one in a million or one in two thousand or whatever the heck the chances are of getting all the battles right. I have to 
be able to do with any RNG. I have to be able to handle the rest of the game with any RNG. Alright, so we're gonna check this stuff again. Magical ring, mount ring. Alright, we're good to go. Magical ring. Uh, Maru. slow that's kind of what RNG manipulation looks like as well <clears throat> doing menus a little bit slower sometimes for this perfect frame to manipulate the RNG value for the next boss next fight but I'm a human I don't have the freaking stuff open anyway to be even see what the RNG is More like brain lag. Got our arms back in. So that means I was a little bit like on the nearly program. 1849 was that? 1849. What? I was on the frame where it already replaced our levels, but it didn't. Rep no, I mean, it didn't replace our levels. It only replaced uh, the quest quest flag. Without replacing anything else. No, replace the items too, actually. Yeah, Ninety-four. He has to attack. Maybe. Five feet have, we're not the last one yet, so this won't kill. Dang, missing input again. Come on. Fatal Blizzard. Blizzard. Oh my god. That's not good. Bad fight. Really bad fight. One down. We lost some time there. That was a really bad fight. So you manipulate RNG in the bad way. <laughs> That was slow menu. Alright, last time for this boss duping. Then we'll move on to the moon. Same thing, reload the save before when to go. Alright, now after this one, we'll uh, set up a save anywhere glitch so we can go to the furthest point in the moon with the debug room and be able to fix our levels before the next boss 
because there's no actually no save before the next boss in the furthest point in the debug room. So we need to set up the save and we're glad to be able to fix our levels. Otherwise, we just game over there. We could do this a few more times for more experience, but or a few little less times for less experience. But either way, it has its negatives. Shoes, magic ring, magic hat. All right, we're good. Pair of shoes. All right, last one here, then we can move on. Okay, cool. He can defend once. Thirty, sixty, three, ninety. Wow, nice. That's a good bat. That's a good fight. Easy goal split. All right. So now to say, uh, set up save anywhere glitch. We need to actually die on a save point, which I'm doing right now, right here. Of course, we replace our party. Characters that can die. Wait, I didn't save. Oof, that was close. That was really close. Need to save. So we have something to save crap with. That would rip the run if I got that account before I save. Actually, I could have escaped, maybe. Very nice.
All right, so now we have Save Anywhere Glitch activated. Now we can go back to the debug room. Go to the furthest point. Which is disc four to the left. All right, now we need to do one more save corruption. This time to fix our levels before the boss. And hopefully we get the items. Do we need some items? Alright, this is one of the tougher save corruptions, and if you fail it, you have to go all the way back to the save point and re-die again. Set up save corruption again, save anywhere glitch. So hopefully we get a first try here. So we need uh, levels, most important thing, and then we need uh, items. We can do it with a couple of different configuration of items, but it'll be a little bit diff more difficult. Depending on what items we get. Levels, nice items. What items? All right, one we got burn. All right, not bad, not bad. Take a little bit extra time to sell this broadswords, but whatever. Not the fastest item configuration, but only loses like a maybe thirty seconds, forty seconds. Most important is we get the debug or the psychedelic bomb. Alright, now from here we're just playing the game like normal until uh, after Owl's fight. So this is actually the start of the final dungeon here. So we fixed our levels with the save corruption there. But of course our party's still messed up. But luckily. The next boss fight that's coming up right here fixes our party, so we don't need to worry about it. I think all these moon fights fix the party. We need that frozen jet for Zeke, the second to last boss, because he's fire and that's how ice. That's gonna be a little bit less effective on him. So every single character has their own fight here, except Dart and Rose have their same fight at the same time. Which is why we don't have to worry about Dart. Dart's experience just roses. It's actually more backstory for all the characters as well. It's kind of like a plot plot fight here for everyone. Plot dump fight. 
I actually see most of Miranda's plot or story arc in the whole run in just this category. Since he's the last character who joins the party. Most of our plots near the end here. And uh, I don't think Louds is mentioned once in this run. We never meet him. I don't think anyone talks about him past, maybe at the very end cutscene, yeah. Meow, meow, meow. Long animation, that sucks. Oof. Hands frozen. I think it has 1800 life. So, we beat her already. Now we just gotta listen to all the plot. Of course, we just defend. Quickest animation we could do. Other than escaping, but we can't escape these battles. It would be cool if we could escape and we saw save a few frames there. Pretty sure escaping is a couple frames faster than defending. Haven't really timed it since there's no use. Hey, session, how's it going to do? What's up? Thanks for your luck. Alright, that's it. Plot story done. Plot dump done. Goal split even, wow. Bunch of free gold still. See, all we have to do is worry about facing our levels with a save corruption. And this fight fixes our party, since it removes it and puts just Moraine in the moon, puts them all back. Heal Hatchel there for his moon fight coming up next. So every time you go to the debug room, it reduces everything to zero again. So we have no gold coming back, coming here. Which is why we spent it all before. Oh, we still need to buy some stuff here too, so... We need to pick up a few items to be able to afford everything we need. Not many items in here, so we're picking up basically everything we can. Since we got the 152 broadsword configuration. So there's three common configurations when you're doing that save corruption to get to the moon. 152 broadswords, 32 broadswords, which is the worst. You'd be really, really tight on gold that way. Or uh, just all the items you had unequipped before. Which is the best... Since you'll have all the gold you can need, we can skip a pickup. Alright, so we need to actually heal after Hatchel's fight, so I'll pick up this 200 gold chest here.
And then I'll go to Hatchel's fight here. What's up, Syndragon? How's it going, dude? Plot, plot dump. <clears throat> we get some closure with Hatchel's daughter, which is Dart's mother. <laughs> so Hatchel here is Dart's, the main character's uh, grandfather. So most of the story we skipped here is that uh, she ran away from home. Actually, we saw the cutscene in his psychedelic bomb test. She killed the person training martial arts under her him and ran away from home. And he looked for her for 20 years, never found her. Yeah, it's it's uh, hinted at a few times. Hundred percent confirmed in the beginning of disc three, where uh, Shauna knows a lullaby that Hatchel's daughter made because Dart sang it to her, and that his mother sang to him. All right, so another story fight. We already killed her here. We we'll have to list on the plot. Shoot! What's up, Lazani? How's it going, dude? That's a good luck. Destroy the porky guy out. Dang, time loss. Oh shoot, almost mashed through that. Gonna lose time because of that end long animation. Only need to actually watch two of these. Uh, the one in the middle was a uh, bad energy. Looks like our PB had the same thing though, so that's fine.
Yeah, normally we be like halfway through disc one at this time. Instead, we're almost at the very end of the game. I keep forgetting to make the more costly waste of points. No, I haven't ordered it yet. I forgot about it, to be honest. I haven't felt like doing anything regarding stream at all for the past week. And now I'm cutting it close because there's only like f four more hours left to freaking... Submit to this marathon. <laughs> Today's literally the last day, and four more hours and it closes. So I have to finish this run, highlight it, and submit. I just haven't streamed in the last like five days so I didn't feel like it. I could have used an older VOD I guess but it wouldn't have been as good. I guess this one I've kind of been slacking as well in the mid near the middle here. Now they just talk about the plot and everyone's plot here and all the background. Alright, Congo's fight here is actually the best in the whole moon. Nothing fancy at all. No talking. Just kill him and you win. It's over. There's a little bit of talking before and after, but that's about it. <clears throat> I might do a legit run one of these days. A legit classic, I mean. Of course, this runs legit. It's just once you go turbo, you don't want to, you don't want to do another ten-hour run matching again. How much life does Endora have? 26 what? 26.95? 26. 26. 26.96? Sorry. There's four less than what I thought. Oops. And then Hatchel or Claire has 24.01, right? Yeah, 
Okay, Japan doesn't matter because I need down burst and psych bomb. Maxed. I already tried 204 psych bomb, didn't work. Unless I. Get down there. Right, I had to pick up this item here because I had the broadswords. You pick up this item to sell it. Turn some gold for everything. If I had not broadswords, I wouldn't be able to afford everything without picking this up. So you tried two four zero zero and it didn't work. Rosendart always getting uh, split up. Oh yeah, I was watching the task, and the task did 2400 to death throws. I was wondering if the task could probably do 204 and still kill it, I think. Actually, I haven't done the math yet. Maybe not. Well, no, my problem. Another time save here is make a run the whole way instead of walk. Yeah, I noticed a few things I hated wrong or slow or dead. I don't think he knew about breakpoints either. I don't think he knew about a uh, magic attack item breakpoints. So magic attack items have breakpoints in their animations where they go on for a certain time longer. If you're uh, assuming perfect matching. Uh, because he was doing like 230s and stuff. <clears throat> he was doing 230s on certain fights like uh, I think Hatchel's fight. Oh, that was for RNG. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure about that. But that's for everyone though. If you have perfect mashing, the breakpoints for attack items are 112%, 158%, and 204%. Anything above those goes on for another certain amount of time, uh, 1.4 seconds. Oh, P bomb advances in RNG. <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember reading that, yeah, yeah. Now that you mentioned that, yeah, I do remember that. Alright, that makes sense. So maybe that's why he has to do, uh... That's why, maybe that's why he does max on, uh... Death, uh, Death Rose. Rose Death, Death Rose, whatever that's called. Alright, so this fight's pretty annoying. Not that he's uh, deadly or anything. Just that we can't do anything until all the talking's done. And he has really long animations. These are this is his mid that's his mid animation. So we want him to use the fastest ones first. So a bunch of talking, we just defend. We just defend a bunch of talking. And it's gone. Alright, we actually want to see this animation and the slower animation. Since it's way shorter than our... Sorry, it's fast animation. Yeah, here's his fastest animation. 
since they're way shorter than is the long animation. Oh well, yeah, it depends on the scene for the task. There might be another seed where he can and it's faster. I don't know if he tested every single seed yet. I don't know how many seeds there are, but there probably is a seed where he's able to do all the fast strats and not have to lag in the menu for RNG manipulation as much. Alright, this is a really good fight so far, actually. And he's back in. Alright, now we need to see first turn laser. What else did I see? Uh, I watched the whole thing. Come on, now I need laser. Laser, 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 laser. Dang it. Oh, this was a good fight. Once he does the final attack, we need to see his long animation. Which it hasn't done a single time yet. Which is a good thing, but now it's a bad thing. Because we need to see it to be able to kill him. There we go. Still not a terrible fight, but it could be. It could have been a lot better. Still might be a gold. Gold's gonna be close. We could definitely gold this split by a lot. Still. He would have done the laser the first turn when we needed it. <clears throat> yeah, if we don't pick up the armor and we get a good fight there, we can ghost with that by a lot. We had to pick up the armor though this run since we all got broadswords from the save corruption getting to the moon. Charm potion. We need one more technically, but or two more technically, but can't can't bring them since they go to the bottom and that ruins our uh, psych bomb dupes that's coming up. Well, I mentioned in the, a comment on the video that uh, the task can probably just do the level manipulation. I'm not sure if it'll be any faster, though. I assume it will be faster, because then they have level 47, 46 for, for everything. <clears throat> and then you don't need such stringent RNG manipulation on... Uh, Hatchels and Morose's fight. But I would say the first thing that uh, that Tasser should look into is the level save corruption. So there's sp very specific frames in the save corruption where you can uh, glitch levels to really, really high levels. 
And if the levels are logical, like 1 to 60. So 60 is actually the max level in this game. So if the level falls within 1 to 60, you can actually use it after you heal. There's a very specific frame in the save corruption. Which will... Uh, the one I saw in Japanese got rose to level 47 and then... Or no, 46. And then Hatchel leaves the party, but when he comes back, he's level 47. I think the task should look into that, that route. The frame is really, really tight though, so it's kind of harder for a human to do. I was trying to do it on Japanese, since Japanese is way, way longer. Japanese is so much more harder than you need to do bosses a lot more to get enough, get enough experience to be able to handle it in the game. So glitching levels is way more important on Japanese. Cold. You warm up my hands. Now for the most annoying part of the whole run. We have to dupe Psychedelic Bombs, which is a very, very tight window frame-wise for save corrupting. So we have one, we want 16, which is four save corruptions. So it goes, you know, double every time. One, two, four, eight, 16. So the frame is so precise that I can lose a bunch of time or I can save a little bit of time here. We'll see how it goes. Bless RNG, bless skill G. <clears throat> so first I'm gonna sell all my stuff to get some money. And then basically what we wanna do is uh, uh, fill up our inventory with items sort items so psych bombs at the bottom and then make saves and then resort our items so that the psychedelic bombs aren't at the bottom and then that way uh that way we want to save corrupt with the psychedelic bombs not at the bottom and we save corrupt the specific frame we'll get the We'll get both the psychedelic bombs at the top and the bottom of the inventory. So nine is the key number when you want to... The nine bottom items are the most important that you can save corrupt and do... Whoops, dang it. I hate when that happens. All right, so first make some saves. Sort our menu. So now psych bombs are at the bottom, we'll save. I like to do three here, just, just in case. These are the hardest save corruptions we do in the whole run. Doesn't matter where we save anymore. The zero data only matters for the first debug save. So 
So now I want to save down to 23, which is 9. And buy them back. So that makes the bottom of your fires at the bottom instead of Psych Bomb. Now we can save Corrupt. That's basically it. So you can only dupe nine items at a time. The nine bottom items. So that's why we wanted uh to make the saves with psychedelic bombs at the bottom, which happens when we sort the item naturally, or sort the menu naturally. And then we want to get the psychedelic bombs up, so we go buy some, uh, what's up KKS, how's it going to do? Nah, it runs not, not that bad. It depends now, this is a total skill. That was good, that was good. Do it again, do it again. So as you can see, we have two psychedelic bombs now. So we sort our menu, and that puts them at the bottom again. So we have at the bottom, we have two at the bottom now. I'll basically do the same exact thing. We can lose a lot of time here, or we can save some time. Hopefully we save time. So we need a very, very specific frame on these save corruptions because we want to, we want to be doing this reset on the exact frame where it's in the middle of the items. It's in the middle of the item uh, replacement during the save. So we get the bottom nine from this first save or the save we're saving over. And we get the top, the rest of the top items from the save where what we have, what we're doing. We were late, so we can uh, do it again. Shoot. I was late, so I was saved over already. <clears throat> the bottom items, or all the items were saved over already, because I was late. So I can able, I could just go on to the next save. Try again from there. If I'm early, none of the items save over. Yeah. The only mistake I'm making is having not the perfect frame when I'm resetting the console. Nice. Alright, two more to go.
All right, so uh, this next one's a little bit different. Once we get it, we have to uh, sell some different things. Because uh, Power Down is actually below Psych Bomb in the menu. So if we don't sell the extra ones we got, we won't have enough room to dupe the Psych Bombs. So after this, we'll sell back down to one. Because we'll have eight Psych Bombs. We need to dupe all those. We can only dupe nine items at a time. Easy. Easy. I don't need to sell those burnouts. Oh, it doesn't matter. All right, one to go. Crap, does that matter? I think it matters. No, it doesn't matter, it doesn't. Why would it matter? All right, come on, last one. It's free, it's free. That's it, let's go. Gotta not get screwed here. Now we're just playing the end of the game. The final two bosses are really, really tough. Uh, I need to switch additions and magical ring.
Very nice, very nice. Alright, four more bosses to go. We have a lot of time save here, too. This run's looking, uh, basically unbeatable at this point. <laughs> as long as nothing bad happens. I'm gonna save before Z, I think. I'm just gonna save before Z, just to be safe. It only takes, what, like 15 seconds to save? I was in the zone for those uh, dupes too. I think I only failed one or two dupes. How many dupes did I fail? One? Once? Holy crud. That's insane. This is a really good run. Alright, we need Psychedelic Bomb not to miss here. Yeah, I thought one too. Which is really insanely good, because that is a really, really tight save corruption. Not just anyone can do it. Willy-nilly. Alright, here we go. Don't miss, please. 10% chances misses. Nice. So that's one turn with power down. Wait, double smack does not gonna kill Izzy. I'm a little bit worried right now. <laughs> I'm a little bit worried right now. Okay, yeah, it does. Easy time save. So after that last elephant there, you can just uh, attack and it ends the fight. If it's dead and we barely killed it. So this would be a spot where a charm potion would be nice, but we can't route in the charm potion with the psych bomb dupes. So we just have to get in the counter here and run from it. Hopefully first turn we get a run. Pass walk? I didn't even I didn't see that part.
I guess I skipped over, skipped over this part and didn't notice anything. Yes. Hmm. I'll take a look at that. Maybe we can't. Maybe we can do something like that. Oh, okay, maybe not. Alright, this boss has a death counterattack that kills Dart and Congo. So we don't need to worry about them dying before then. Yeah! Wrong character. Oh my god, that was too much damage. What the heck? Well, I'm gonna have to use a healing fog after this fight. Pretty bad RNG. I think we're fine defending there. Hope. And slipped off the freaking X button. <clears throat> I think it's gonna do like 790 or something to the Congo. Non powered down. Still save time here, that's good. Gonna save more time though. Yep, 790 like I thought. Alright, so we'll heal. We'll heal and save, just to be safe. These next two fights are really, really RNG. Alright, this boss is uh, really, really trolly sometimes. Really, really, really trolly sometimes. Well, we'll just play it safe. Hopefully not get really bad RNG. Learn through your body. All right, this boss has like two ATBs. Sometimes takes double turns and just power down. Doesn't last long enough. Mm. 
All right, that's good. That's good. So hopefully, Rose, uh, Miranda gets two turns in a row here. That'd be the best case scenario. That's going to defend now. Dang it. Hopefully he's still powered down. Hopefully he's still powered down. Hey, I fell off X button again. All right, cool. All right, cool. I didn't want to have to attack with Dart, but we have to. Hopefully Miranda gets next turn. As long as he doesn't get two turns in rows and kill him, he can get two turns in a row and kill Miranda here. I was hoping he would just have a turn before Dart and kill him, but apparently not. He has a counterattack to Dart, so we can force him to kill Dart like this. But now we need a turn. One turn, he's dead, but he can kill us in two hits. Nice. Nice. Not bad, not bad. Could have been worse. We lost all the time, but could have been a lot worse. Could have game over. There's a lot of time save on that fight, not having to force the counterattack with Dart. Like if he would have targeted Dart with that attack before that, I'm um, with instead of Miranda. We would have actually saved time here, even with the, even with the save. Melbu Frama! Another twist. There's a lot of twists in this plot. Turns out the bad guy wasn't the bad guy. Cat's paw of a cat's paw of a cat's paw. Alright, now time for the actual hardest fight. That fight was pretty tough, but the next fight is tougher. Next fight is even tougher. Although, we have 12 psych bombs to use, so... That's always nice. We'll see how RNG goes for me. We can get really, really bad RNG and then game over. Nothing we can do about it. Or we can get really good RNG and have a goal split and have a mega unbeatable run here. Right now, I think this is going to be the run. <laughs> I don't think I'll be doing this category ever again, to be honest, if we have a good, good fight here. And I don't think I'm going to need to unless... There's a new route, which I might actually try the new route. Like I said, we can glitch levels with a very, very, very specific frame corruption. So instead of duping all those Wendigos, we might be able to just uh, glitch Roses and Hatchel's level. This is legit, so I'm not 
If there's still turbo category, that's different. So I still need to get a run like this on turbo. This time isn't unbeatable, but it's... <laughs> I'm only missing one... Psych Bomb dupe is a, a really, really tall order for anyone, myself included. I was just in the... I was in the groove today with the save corruptions, apparently. Dylan gonna beat me? I don't think so. I don't think so. So yeah, the story doesn't really make much sense, <laughs> given that we skipped 80% of it. All you need to know is the final boss. The final boss, RNG Nightmare. I think at least we don't have it to do a normal run, have to be 10 hours at this point. Alright, let's go. Are you gonna count lasagna? Or should I? Jugan Buster, yeah, uh Rose is the only one to equip it, the strongest weapon. Okay, I'll I'll count. It's kinda hard to count though with the non turbo. <laughs> But I got it, I got it. Alright, RNG Fest commence. Don't worry, I'll count. 26, 37, minus, come, not dart, Hatchel, yes, ooh baby, perfect RNG so far, holy, cr four, five, six, minus, Six eight four minus All right, single target dart. Or that that works. That's fine. Nine twelve minus. Yeah, that was perfect. This is perfect so far. Ah, I keep missing. Keep missing inputs there. Nine twenty six. Minus nine twelve. Minus thirty nine five five minus my turn, my turn, my turn. No, I'll rip. 
All right, that was a pretty good start. Pretty good start. He's halfway dead. Or almost halfway dead. He still has one more turn without with power down. Hopefully we have at least three turns here in a row. Hopefully we have three turns in a row here. Hopefully. Hopefully. At least one psych bomb. At least one psych bomb. Uh, yeah. Okay, there you go. Nine one two minus. Dang it, that sucks. Twenty six thirty seven minus. Dang, that uh, was not good at all. Yeah, it was a really, really, really good first phase, but in second phase it was pretty bad. At least we didn't get sucked in, I guess. <clears throat> You're counting damage? I'm counting life from life. Okay, it doesn't matter. I got I got the count. My count's right. He's at 21073. Life remaining. 21073 is his life total right now left. Yeah, I actually need to focus on counting and <laughs> getting the inputs correct. <laughs> it's not as easy as it sounds. But so far, this is a pretty good fight. Could be a little better, but could be worse. Hopefully we get some turns here before Hatchel dies. Hopefully we just get some turns here to do some damage. It's not terrible, not terrible. Hatchel gets double damage at red HP, by the way. His final weapon. Hatchel's final weapon gives him 50% more damage at yellow and double damage at red HP. Twenty-six thirty-seven. Nice. Six oh eight. Alright, this we're gonna kill Hatch unless it misses. Hopefully it misses. That'd be really sick. Nope. We want these guys to blink. This is not good. Let's say they stop and Hatchel stays at red here without dying. Six oh eight minus blink, yes. Ugh. I gotta heal. Hopefully they just blink again. Or he gets another turn. Nice. 
Nice. All right, blink again. Or turn phase. Dang it. All right, that's not bad. Oof, that's a lot of damage, though. This phases him. Twenty six seventeen. Alright, bless RNG. This is the hardest phase, hardest fight of the game right here. Phase four, Melbu, the last boss. He can do nothing, or he can kill me. He can be a big, good, good sport, or he can kill me. If he gets two turns in a row, does the worst things, and I don't miss, we're dead, and game over. Or he can do lightning. I'm on 10-1-6-2. He has 10,162 10, life left. Pretty sure I didn't miss up my count. Pretty sure I didn't mess up my count. He should be red HP. If my count is right, he has red HP right now. So this final boss is basically Genesis. He creates the world, now he's destroying the world. And since he's you know, the god of destruction. So this fight's actually hard, easier and harder at the same time. In a normal run, we'd be lower, higher level, and what we do less damage because we don't have the duped psych bombs. So we have less HP, but we do more damage. Ugh. Bad start, bad start. Miss Hatchel, please. Target Hatchel and miss. Target Hatchel. Target Hatchel. Dang it. Miss. No, I'm not gonna miss. My turn? Please, my turn. Thank you. Appreciate it. Seven minus. <clears throat> Are you kidding me with this? I have four psych bombs left. That's enough to kill him. So Hatchel should be healing. Hatchel just be healing. All right, give me another turn, please. My turn now. Appreciate it. Come on, man. Come on, man. Please miss.
Miss. Alright, well that that's not bad. Don't guard. Last angel prayer. God dang it. Please don't target Miranda again. Please give me some turns now. My turn! Oh my god, I hate you, dude. Don't attack yourself. Don't attack Hatchel either. Damn it. My turn. Come on, man. Give me some turns that don't involve attacking myself. Thank you. Don't do it. Lightning. Do lightning. God damn it, this sucks. Come on, man. Miss. Such terrible RNG right now. Miss, 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 miss. God dang it. Whoop. <clears throat> Here we go. We only need one more turn. He has two attacks that can game over us. He has two attacks that can game over us. My turn, my turn, my turn, my turn, my turn. Cool, that's not one of them. That's not one of them. My turn. My turn is over. My turn. My turn. Alright, this should be enough if I counted right. <laughs> 